I think the sun's just finally getting itself right in the right spot where I can bring a chair out and sit in the shade. <laughs> Seems like that has been a problem so far with this camera is that somehow when I'm sitting in the shade and there's a little bit of sunlight on this deck, it kind of wipes it out and isn't able to handle it. The interesting thing is that standing up, looking at the camera and kind of talking normal, microphone seems to work better. Even with the noise of cars traveling, birds singing, <laughs> even noises in the background. But one thing that I have been reading about today, you know, that kind of reminds me of uh, when I used to put in a, used to work in the mill, and uh, you get these little earplugs that you put in that really don't amount to much, but it does seem to block some of the noise that the decibels that are so high and so constant that they can cause you ear damage and sadly I wound up with ear damage so I have a, a ringing in my ears constantly that I really never paid attention to but if I think about it then it's pretty obvious that it's there <laughs> so I just kind of ignore it and go on my way and Sometimes noise does that to you, you know, it overwhelms you, it kind of, it's going to affect the sensitivity of your hearing, you know, that you're not able to maybe hear as well, and as you get older, you know, you kind of understand that, because you might need a hearing aid, but sometimes noise will put a ringing in your ears that you're not able to hear other things as well, and when that happens, you know, you need to take the time to pay more attention, to focus in on what you're hearing, so that way you know if you heard it or not. I know for me, I noticed on the internet a lot that because I'm an internet-based ministry that a lot of people will see something on the internet and they'll go, ooh, let's pass that on to someone. And then it turns out to be something that's completely wrong or false, might even be a lie. And they just went ahead and shoved it on to someone else who read it and thought that it was true. And so they went and got excited and they got a whole big bunch of people together and got all jazzed about it. And none of them ever examined what it had to say and started their own little church and got their own little cult going and got their own little way. And finally, one day they had to look around and say, you know what? The world didn't end today. Gee, maybe we should have paid a little more attention to what we were listening to. That's kind of what you need to do on the internet. You know, you need to prove all things and, you know, it's not going to stop you from looking at things on the internet. That's your choice. You know, if you, if you feel like that you've got the freedom to go do whatever you want to do, then go do it. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> I got enough problems with my own eyesight, much less my hearing because I have ringing in my ears. But. One of the things you do need to do is realize that your brain is like a storage unit. And it's going to take in all this stuff and it's going to stay there and God's going to kind of bring that hard drive out one day and you're going to stand before him and kind of give an accounting for everything that you saw. Gee, that's a different way of looking at the internet. Everything you said, oh boy, and everything you did. Matter of fact, Jesus said you're going to stand before him and He's either going to admit he knows you, or you don't. You know, I don't know about you, but if Jesus is going to kind of hold me accountable, you know, for all of that, I'd be thinking about what I'm doing a little more and paying attention to what I'm hearing, maybe so that I can replace some of the junk that's in my brain with some of the good stuff that he's got. I don't know, maybe that doesn't work for you. It works for me. <laughs> and lately I've been needing a lot more of it because last night, man, I couldn't sleep. I had in my head just all these terrible thoughts. And, you know, there's some religious people that'll tell you, well, you know, you just gotta go out there and pray to the devil, you know, he's just trying to attack you and putting all these thoughts in your brain. You just gotta go out there and, you know, anoint the oil and sprinkle the dust, you know, and get the rust out and, you know, do this and do that. You know, 
Not me, man. <laughs> I'm like you. I turn the TV on. <laughs> I watch some dumb program until I can fall asleep. So, you know, all that sounds nice, you know, and if it works for you, go do it, you know. You can make everything into super religion or you can kind of just, you know, realize that, yeah, you, your brain's a program, you know, and it's going to record everything for you. And you're going to regurgitate it, you know, one day and have an accounting. And for me, I kind of hang myself and my coat and hat on grace a lot more than I do on works because <laughs> there are times where I'm not so proud of the things I do, you know. Nobody ever claimed to be perfect in my life, you know. I know that every time I look at someone else, I can see my faults in them. <laughs> so I know they're not perfect. Uh, but in Tozer today, mankind's basic need remains ever the same. By terrible things in righteousness wilt thou answer us, O God of our salvation, which stills the noise of the seas, the noise of their waves, and the tumult of the people. Psalm 65, 5, and 7. Some very sincere people try to reason that since there is no stillness in this modern world, we must learn to get along without it that we don't have to be still to be quiet and know that he is gone. Because after all, we have our iPods, we have our ear pods, we have our nano pods, <laughs> we have our moving pods. Matter of fact, we have pods. But this is a summation of the reasoning. We cannot hope to bring back the still waters and quiet pastures where David once led his sheep. This rat race of civilization is too noisy for us to hear the still small voice, so we must learn to hear God speak in the earthquake and in the storm. We have to get our sound system just cranked up right. We got to make those speaker systems work just to the perfect place where we can have everyone hear what we're saying. Matter of fact, you know, we're so modern now that we even let people text while we're giving a sermon so that they can interact with our pastor who's behind the scenes texting with them to make sure that they get the point. We work in a civilized way that, you know, we've even got it down to such a science that we will, we will put a podcast out there simultaneously so that you can sit at your home and never get up out of your couch so that you can watch church on your own fanny so that you don't have to do anything else except interrelate on that cyber connection that you have with your camera. Uh, yeah. You could. You can, and you probably are. But if you're like most people, that old Warcraft game still hanging around. And it's still getting a lot of people playing it 24-7. Matter of fact, sometimes the noise gets so loud you can't hear the birds sing. Sometimes the noise gets so loud that that poor mother supposed to be taking care of a child can't hear the crying in the crib sometimes you know when they're running down the road with all that music in their ear they can't hear the screech of the tires that's coming near the question is with all the noise that goes on and all the modern gadgets we got I wonder if Jesus said hey it's time to go home let's go I wonder if we would hear him because you see, there was a scripture that he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. But the next line is the interesting one. It says, If any man hear my voice. Now, he wrote that to Christians in the book of Revelation, and he wrote it to one of the churches, because, you see, knocking on the door is one thing, but apparently they didn't hear the door knock, because the next line says, If any man hear my voice. So, after he was pounded on the door, he had to call out to him inside and say, Hey, it's Jesus. It's me. Open the door. Let me in. So, be careful the noise that you're participating in or the technology that you think is so beneficial. There is a time and a place for everything, and there is a time and a place to use technology to your benefit. I'm a techie. I know. Look what we're doing. But there's also that time where you need to pull back, sit back, be still, wait on the Lord, and listen. Not just get on your knees in some church steeple, you know, or some cathedral, you know, and pray like crazy, you know, and light a candle and do your thing. 
but stop. Stop what you're doing. Stop what you're thinking. Stop wherever you are and figure out if you can't do it one day a week or one hour of one day a week or one minute of one day a week, find some place where you do it at least once. And you just might be surprised because you know what? If you be still, the promise is you'll hear his voice. The answer is that the soul of man does not change fundamentally, no matter how external conditions may change, and neither does God. The aborigine in his hut, the college professor in his study, the truck driver in the bedlam of the city traffic have all the same basic needs, to be rid of their sins, to obtain eternal life, and to be brought into communion with God, to know him and interrelate with him in conversation. Civilized noises and activities are surface phenomena, a temporary rash of the epidermis of the human race. It's passing away, and you'll find that in the middle of the night, there's no cars driving, are there? To attribute sound values to them and then try to bring religion into harmony with them is to commit a moral blunder so large as to stagger the imagination. And for one, which we should surely be paying long after this frenetic extravaganza we call civilization has ended and its tragedy and everlasting grief. Because you see, noise can drown out that still small voice. You could be so caught up with hearing everything that you forgot to be still and wait to listen. Now, that's kind of odd, isn't it? It's kind of strange that there's so many voices out there speaking all at the same time. There's so much noise going on. How can we ever get to the place of being still and knowing he's God and hearing his voice as he said he would, as he promised he would, as Jesus even warned us at knocking at the door that if you hear his voice. Well, you see, it's a matter of choice. What you decide to do is up to you. You have the freedom to do anything you really want to do, just about. And you can put the earbuds on 24-7. You could sit on the internet <laughs> even longer than that. You could fill your life with nothing but even religious noise. But if you're never listening to God, if you're never taking the time to communicate and wait for Him to communicate to you, then I think the sad day might come when Jesus says, although you did all these marvelous works in my name and these miracles, do you really know me? The reason I'm asking, and this being Jesus speaking, is what if he says to you at the end of your life, depart from me, I never knew you? How scary that would be. So the question you have to figure out is kind of, do you hear his voice? Or are you following the voice of another? Only you know. I know. <laughs> For me, there's a lot of noisy clatter going on nowadays. A lot of opportunities to hear a lot of things. But the times I'm blessed that make me smile from ear to ear are the times that I'm still with God and alone. Just Him and I and a cup of coffee sometimes. Sometimes it means getting up really early. Sometimes it means staying up really late. Sometimes this means finding a place where I can just be alone with him. Might be something you have to do.